This is probably going to be that breakthrough video for you to understand components, how to create micro interaction, you know, how to create this effect going on here, how to work with gradients, how to, you know, work with blur effect on your gradients. This is probably, probably going to be that breakthrough video. And I want you guys to work with me all the way to the end. Pay close attention to what I am about to say to you guys. Okay, all right, let's get started. So I'm going to create a blank slit, right? And for those people who do not understand Figma, I'm going to be doing a lot of holding of hands here. So just stay with me. So the plus here is to create new Figma file, click on new design file, right? And then it's loading. Okay, boom, it's all loaded up. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to say, Prima website, I'm going to take a screenshot, right? So we don't just have to navigate, we don't have to go back and forth, right? So pay attention to this website. You see the way it's scrolling, right? You see the uh, over effect, everything. We're going to implement it on us, right? So for those using Windows, I'm going to hold my Shift Window S, and I'm going to just simply drag through and then copy and then screenshot, right? And I'm going to come here. I'm going to paste what I need here, right? So we're going to go to Freema website. We're going to copy the logo SVG. I'm going to paste it somewhere here, right? So you see that. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a frame. How you create a frame is click on the frame tool, right? So they are already presets, right? You can work with, right? So you click on if you don't want to work with presets, you can just drag and then set a dimension. But we're going to be working with presets. Click on the frame tool, it appears to you, and you click on. We're going to be working with 1440, that's the default desktop size, right? 1440 by 1024. So this is what we're going to be working with, guys, right? I'm just going to take this to dark mode, straight up to black, right? And we're going to start with the navigation section. Right, but before we do that, let's click on our rectangle tool up here, draw like three shapes, right? Because we just want to like put our colors there and we're going to be working with. <clears throat> so I'm going to move them here, right? And I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to go to my picker tool. How you go to your picker tool is by clicking on I, okay? I takes you to your picker tool. You want to copy these colors here, right? If you don't want to click on I, you can just click on the rectangle you want to put that color on, right? And click on your fill tool, open your color palette, and then you click on the picker tool, guys. Um, I think my laptop is lagging. Let me on my let me turn off my turn on my GPU. Okay, this is better. All right. So I'm going to click on my picker tool here, and I'm going to first click on this color, right? Click on this here, and I'm going to click on this color, right? And then here we're going to be using white. We're going to be using white color, guys. We're going to be using white color. All right. So we're going to be using these three colors. I mean, we'd have to use some other color because I can see some splash of green, but I'm going to explain that. In a bit okay so um we're gonna just move this here to this section here right and we're going to tackle sorry we're going to tackle the logo first all right all right guys um we're going to be making use of poppins right that's going to be our font move this a little bit away from our frame we're going to be making use of Poppins as our font as our typography, right? Font is the five. All right, Poppins. When I think of something, I just type it out. I'm just going to increase the size and put that here, so you can have in mind what's going on, right? Okay, so let's start with the logo. <laughs> All right. So you see what we have here, right? We have this, uh, say, different shades of blue and then white, right? So we're going to illustrate that, guys. 
<laughs> we're going to illustrate to that because this particular logo here they just give us access to blue so just the vector you can't really differentiate it's not broken apart they're together right so we're going to use our pen tool and do something for ourselves right so we're going to from here right drag to this point okay i hope you guys got what i did i clicked on the pen tool here right at the top okay and move here click here all right drag to this point okay drag to this point click on it these are, these are called not points right guys these, these are called not points so click here too okay we got this particular section uh, we can just give it a shade of black right so we're going to go to our pen tool again we'll do the same thing here drag to this point drag to this point drag to this point drag to say this point here and drag to this point you can see guys it's not straight exactly so we're going to lock in here and then we'll come here and look for a way We'll come here and we'll delete this guy. Um, I'm just going to delete this guy here. Right. I clicked on my A. So, I clicked on A on my assets. So, this is like you click on your move to select the north point and you just simply press delete. All right. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to use like another shape. So, the stroke, for you to invert your stroke, just simply press shift X. You can do it manually, remove your stroke and put a fill, right? And just um, give it another shape, right? So we're going to do the same thing for the top here. We're going to click here, okay? We're going to click here, click here, drag to this point, drag to this point, drag to this point, right? And drag to this point right same thing click on your move to click here then delete that not point so it's straight all right the so same thing give it a different shape then make it that right so now you can comfortably just take your guy out of this here so it can be separate now remember guys we already can delete that we no longer need this right we can delete it now we have our What's the word? Our uh, Framer logo. So you can come here. This is a deeper color. This is a lighter shade of blue. And then this white color. Ladies and gentlemen, we just created the Framer icon. Okay, stay with me. So here you can as well just frame it, guys. So, um, frame it. Now, it's okay you group it, right? But you can frame the group. All right, I have my reasons why. So when you frame the group, this guy, you just set it the constraint to center, right? So you can, you know, make this guy a square shape. It's a good practice, guys. It's a good practice. So I'm just going to make this say 90 width and height 90. 90. What's I'm doing 90. Um, right, so just make sure you don't stretch it. I'm going to make this top and bottom, I'm going to make it around say eight. Right, so guys, this works for me. Now, this way, I can easily just scale this down. Right, I'm using my K tool just to scale. You don't want to use that here. Yeah, you can come here, scale, and just it down right all right i'm just going to go to my text tool and i'm going to type out gray map so guys we're working with poppins right we're working with poppins just click on use the bold text and bring it down here somewhere around here right okay so we're going to have to like so this should be around like 18, if I'm not mistaken. And then this guy here, we should try to adjust it to fit that. It should be bigger, right? Actually, it should be bigger. So we can make this 24. Now, 
This guy in the middle, you know, it's it's we set it to center. The reason we set it to center is so we can, you know, set the frame proportion, right? But now it's no longer going to be on center. We're going to put it on scale, top and bottom, right? So that way, if we're adjusting the size, it's going to be scaling also. So we're going to lock our constraint and make it 24, right? So that's it. Good. So we can call this framer icon, right? So that works. Okay. So we can do the spacing around it could be like eight, four, right? So here now we can highlight both of them and then frame it now, right? And then call it logo. Ladies and gentlemen, we just created the framer logo, all right? I'm still looking at it. It actually works, it actually works. So I'm just gonna draw, drag it in here, right? But before we start placing anything, guys, we need to create our layout grid. We need to create our layout grid. Now, how do you do that? You click on your frame, right? Click on your frame, your parent frame. Click on the plus to your right, okay? And then click on the column grid. Increase your count to like, say, 12. That's standard for desktop because it's divisible by 2, right? Um, and then your margin so like you could use 56 56 really could fly or we could multiply it by two right so we could use one one two so we just keep this around here all right then we can now go ahead and prepare all right guys so just take note we're not supposed to put this here we're supposed to put a variant of the logo here right so i'm just going to copy this move out the master component and then paste a variation not a variation called an instance because this is the master component and this is the instance the reason this is called an instance is because if you change anything from the master component this is going to change right because it's an instance right and it's always good to create components so you can um so when you put like different put like that component in different places, you know, create different instances of that component and easily change it from the master component. That's one benefit. All right, let's go ahead. So we've done that. So here we're going to create a component, right? That will cater for say over effect, um, menu item with icons and without icons, right? We're going to do that just now. All right, let's go ahead. So we got, uh, let's let's create a component first, all right? So we'll call this feature, features, I think it's S, right? So we're going to make this around 16. How I know it's 16 is because it's body text, right? It is around 16, 14, 18. So I'm going to work with 16, right? um we we'll just leave it at medium guys okay now i'm going to create a component right i'm going to make that component auto layout all right and i'll tell you why i'm making it auto layout uh, my mic all right sorry my hands all right back to business i'm going to make it auto layout guys let me undo a bit I created component, right? Now I'm going to turn that component into auto layout, right? Now you see, I have access now to set my padding and my, yeah, my padding horizontally and vertically, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna set my padding horizontally to like eight and vertically I'm going to do like four, like so, right? Now, the reason I created the padding, so the reason I created, made it auto layout is so when I put icon inside it, it can be responsive. Now I'm going to explain that in a bit. So create hard variant, right? Now we're going to call this a, this is going to be the default state and this is going to be the um, over state guys or active state all right 
So I'm just going to dim this down a little bit, right? Okay, and I'm going to um yeah, so we have this now, right? This two. Remember, guys, remember, remember. I created a variant. So in case you do not see how I did that. So this is when I added the component and my padding. And I clicked here, say add a variant. Okay. Now I can call this variant say active. Okay. Now and this guy here is going to be the default state. So I'll reduce, just mute the white a little bit. Just use a gray color, right? Now, if I click on the master component, you see, you are seeing property, right? If I want to change that property to hit, right? Now this active here, probably might want to call it hover state, right? Because I mean, we need it for hover state, right? For the interaction, right? Now we have that. We also need to create variants with icons. So we're going to click on, we're going to create another variant, okay? And this time, we're going to call it, so, but before we do that, let's create a property called variant. Now we call this here, we call it icon, right? And then the value is going to be yes. Now you see that. Now we'll go ahead and create another variant, right? Now we'll call this icon yes. Now we'll go back to this two here. And we're going to set the icon to no, right? No. And I'll tell you, just pay attention, right? And then here we can call out our feather icon, right? Call out our feather icon and then the icon pointing down so type the down icon here this guy we need here so we need to turn this icon here to a component right we need an instance inside this here now take note the master component cannot exist master component but an instance can exist master for a variant right so we're just going to drag i'm going to copy this right into here right how i how i did that was holding my alt key and dragging from it so it's going to duplicate it, right or you can just do your normal copy and paste and then drag it out all right so i'm going to look for a way to put it in i'm just going to cut it here i'll come here and then paste it inside now you see guys see what just happened just our icon inside now we're going to increase this a little bit, right? And this is our icon. Probably need to make it the same color as this. So we'll just copy the color code of this and then paste it here, right? Now you see that. All right. So this guy here is carrying an icon state of yes. Okay. We're going to create the active state of icon or the hover state. What do you call it? Over state, right? So we'll create another variation of this. So we really can just duplicate this, hold our alt key, right? Or you just come here and press your plus. For so pressing your plus, will bring out say from the first one, but we don't want that. We we'll just duplicate this guy here, right? Okay. And then icon yes, then we we'll change the state here to over, right? Then we need to make it white colors for both of them. Now, so pay attention. The selection color means that so Figma can automatically detect the color present in a particular composition, right? Right? In a sub-composition, right? So in this case, it's detecting that the color for the text and the element are the same thing. So you can change it to white from here, right? On a normal day, you probably would have to go to the text and then from the field, change it to white and then from here, you're not even seeing it, you have to go inside the what's the word instance and then change the stroke color to white. But you see how like how people have made life easy for us. Just click on it and it will detect of the color in that selection, then you just make it white. Okay, attention, guys. All right, so now we've
done this part. Okay. Um, now, why it was important for me to use icon yes and no? So it's called that's actually a Boolean function, right? Now I'm going to drag one of these components outside so you see what we've done. Now you see the radio button there, right? So you can check in icon yes and check an icon no, yes, it's checking out. But I'm noticing something, right? You can see that the height changes when you check on icon, icon, right? So this guy here, it's probably too big, right? So we're going to put it around 20 or 16, right? See, on a normal day, we could, we could actually make this fixed, right? The height, it's say maybe around like 32, or our padding could be say around eight. Now that way, if you on, it's actually still reacting because this guy here is actually too big, right? We could increase our padding so much that it will not have to react to this, right? So if we use 16 padding, right, it probably will not react, but it's not ideal. Again, the icon needs to be smaller, even on a normal day, it needs to be smaller. It does not have to be as big as the element itself. So we're gonna make this say around 16, Right, the lock the ratio, guys. Lock your ratio. Okay, all right. So you see, now we turn it on, turn it off. You see, it's not reacting anymore. You see, before the height was reacting, and that's not good for business. It's not good for business, all right? Okay, um, so we're just gonna drag this here and see how it sits. So this sits well, uh, yeah, actually, it does sit well. Right, it does sit well. Okay, now the spacing for our icon is giving 10. Probably we need them more closer to each other, so we're going to make it around 8. Okay, um, yeah, it works. So we're just going to duplicate it. I right, say one, two, three. So I want to teach you another trick before moving forward. There's something called text um, property, right. So this is your text here. You can highlight on all of them, right? And then click on your create text property, right? And call it label, right? And then leave the value as it is there. Now, what that means is that you can click on your text and then change the label from your um, component property area. Okay? And that's really good. So that way it's easy. It's it saves your value, right? No matter the state you are in, it carries the value onto the next state. Yeah, onto the next state, or you onto the next variance, provided um, you are signed. So, for example, example would be say this particular guy is holding that property, right? Provided the next one is still holding the same text property I created, the value are always going to be the same thing. So this is really helpful. Okay, this is really helpful. Um, yeah, so the second one here, we're going to change it to resources, support, enterprise, and pricing. Just going to zoom out and then change the text resources, support, support, enterprise, pricing. Okay. All right, I'm going to explain something for you. Now, one of the reasons I told you we have made this auto layout is because we want it to be responsive in some sense. An example would be if I turn my layout, if I turn my icon, uh, my icon variant on, okay, if I type any text here, you see that the arrow is adjusting to the to the, comp, to the instance right is adjusting because i'm using auto layout and the reason it's adjusting is because this guy here is automatically set to um to hog not even that guy this particular guy the variant itself is set to hog hog means that when as the as the child 
uh, as the child what the child content right enlarges i want you to expand it because you are hugging it right so if you hug a slim person right and that slim person starts to get fat right you hugging that person you somehow have to adapt right you see so that's what is happening here guys i don't know how to explain that better but that's how it works okay so one reason you want to use auto layouts so same thing actually goes for this here if you notice right while i was typing it they were overlapping i had to adjust it if it was auto layout as i'm typing everything is adjusting okay the default when you make, make an auto layout is bug which means that as i am as contents are increasing it's adapting because it's hugging it all right so yeah that's that so this guy now probably want to slap it in the middle it doesn't have to be in the middle it could be at the left hand side i want to believe that's what they did yeah it could be at the left hand side so this guy here the first three have icons so you select the first three and can turn on the icons see love it turn on the icons right and then so we are done with the say we call it now menu um or navigation item navigation call it say navbar slash items okay because we could call this then navbar right so i mean i'm really particular about my convention right so we can call this not not even that said uh, we can call the entire thing not but let me be done first <clears throat> let me be done so we're done with this now let's work on the buttons guys right well before we work on the button let's just make this interactive let me play this okay we're going to go to prototype i'm going to use a surface pro ipad i love it like i just love the render really that's all so name our Frame to Prima Replicate, Prima Replicate, mm. yeah, YouTube. I'm going to be posting this on YouTube. Right. So it's, it's trying to render. That's why it should be black. See, now we have this. Now, guys, remember, we're supposed to make this interactive. So these hovers are not working yet. How you make that is simple. Easy guys, just click here, go to your prototype, drag this your plus sign you're seeing there to this. An alternative is just you can click on plus here, and then your it will be to, um, your interaction type will be to change to change to what change to the over state. As simple as that. Okay, and then set it to dissolve, right? So that way, see these guys. Um, it's not working because we didn't set it to on over, it's on tap. So if I tap it, it's going to change. But that's not what we want. All we want is on over. So you know, there up here, click by hovering, right? By hovering, we should change, ladies and gentlemen. This stuff is easy, easy, guys. It's easy, right? So we've done that here. We do the same thing, okay, right? Um, by hovering, right? Dissolve the uh, same thing, all right? And that's why it's really good to use um, the text property. So that way, as it changes, it's carrying the same label value to the next state. Like, love it, guys. Love it. All right. Um, right. So let's move forward. Now let's start with the button, right? So we're going to have this contact sale here. You can still use the menu item for that, but it's just going to be outside the um, auto layout we did here. So we call this menu items, menu, we just call this menu, right? And then here, the like CTAs, change this to contact sales, right? Just move this back a little bit. Now let's tackle the button. So this button now, pay attention. I can see gradient here. Let's go. I can see gradient here. Let's go. All right. Um. Yeah. How do you even start that? So we need the text, right? 
So let's look at the button again. So this is like medium size, right? Need a text. So we're creating two different major variations. Okay. I mean, they're going to have over a text too, right? So what we could do here is, yo, we could actually just duplicate this, right? And then I could trick my way to getting it. Oh, see, you guys are newbies. Let me re repeat what I did at first, right? You probably would understand this thing called component and variant. Let's do the game. Already. So I'm going to type out my text. I'm going to call it um, login. Okay. I see this login here. I'm going to make it what? Auto layout, guys. Where's that auto layout? Here. Not anywhere. Shift A. Press a Shift A. Or you right click and click on add auto layout. Okay. Now, you see our login button. It has a stroke. Okay. It has a stroke, guys. Now, that stroke. Let's leave it around gray. You could come here and copy the color code we used for this 646464. Come here, paste it, paste it here, right, for the stroke. And then here for the text tool, we paste it here. Okay. Now, here we we'll give you the border radius of somewhere around 8. Okay. Now, let's check what's the border radius it's giving. We could do 12 and 8. 12 and 8, guys. We actually would know it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. Like it works. 12 and 8. Let me see. Ooh. 12 and 8 works. Okay. So if it was on mobile phone, I probably would say it should be bigger because of the thumb row, right? Easy to click on, right? But this is on web. So I mean that can fly. Guys, it can fly. So we'll change the stroke to the around 1.5. That way it's way more visible. Because when I placed it on it, I saw the render. It wasn't looking too good. It looks better now. All right. So we have done that. Now we can move ahead to what create our component, right? After you create your component, create your variant, guys. So the way frame out did it on hover. It actually dings out, like it actually goes darker. That's the crazy part. So we we'll click on selection so we can change all the colors together. It goes darker. I don't know why they did that, but it goes darker. It looks more clickable, like it, it makes sense. That's actually the standard. When you want it to be passive clickable, it should go dimmer, not brighter. Okay, so we do that, right? We can just go ahead and and I move on and do our over state. So you see, I drag my elements here. Okay, I change it to white hovering and then change it to dissolve. And I make sure that this my text here. I create my text property and they call this label and then the value changes here. Then this place here, I assign the same label property I created to this so it can only store my it can always store my value, guys. And always store my value. All right. So we're 33 minutes in. Let's go. We're almost there. All right. So we have that. Now I'm just going to go ahead and say name my variant. Call this state. All right. Call this default and call this over. All right. Okay. All right. So I'm going to add another variant. Okay. But while I'm adding another variant, I'm going to create a variant property. I'm going to call it a gradient. Gradient, yes and no. Or, depending on the button types, right? So, there are normally like three button types. There's like solid, there's gradient, and there's outline, right? I think there are more with icon, without icon, and all of that. But say this particular one, if we can't, we cannot use toggle, right? So what we need to do is to just make it drop down, right? So what you do in this situation is gradient, you call it say maybe button type, right? Button type. Um, let's change the value, first value to outline, because that's what we have first, all right? So now the second one here, we we'll click here and add new value and call it gradient. 
right? Now here, I taught you guys how to invert colors, how to invert your field from stroke to field, so shift X to invert for me, right? Or you could remove, or you could remove the stroke, right? And just put the field, or let's press shift X. But let's, 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 let's put field, let's put field, right? So here we use a, okay, okay. Let's make this guy here white. But before we do that, let's go and pick on our colors. Remember guys, it's going to be a gradient color. So I'll use this as default, right? And expect the right. So let's look at the bottom. So you see, this side is way more highly saturated than the left hand side. So um, this is the most saturated color. So we're gonna go with that view here. So we'll go on that. Uh, we'll make this guy here the text. We're going to make it white, right? Now, now having that, we're going to click on the feed, right? We're going to then click on gradient effect and you see. So this is a new feature on Figma. I introduced it like on my Twitter page. So for you to turn your rotate your gradient, just click here, right? And then I need the darker end to be by the right hand side. So I'm going to flip it, right? So this dark end, I'm going to click it. I'm going to click my picker tool and select this gradient color. This solid color here, this particular one. So now it looks more like what we are looking for. I think it actually looks better. Just saying. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to work with that. All right. So we're going to create a over effect. So you just duplicate this. Click on this plus. You're gonna duplicate that, guys. Um. So how we could do this is we just should reduce the opacity to like 50. Too much. To like 70. Reduce the entire opacity to like 70. Right. And this color here will also reduce the opacity to like 70. Like. Right. So here we're going to drag it here. So we're going to remove the hover effect. You know we copied it from there, so you make sure you remove the interaction, right? Make sure you don't confuse yourself. So drag this here, do white hovering, and then yeah, it works. Dissolve. Yep, it works. So we can start placing. We can call this here button. So just to test what we have done, we're going to drag one out. I hold my Alt key and drag it out. If you don't want to drag it out, you can come to your asset panel and then check. You get to see everything you created. So this is the button we're looking for. So you come here, now you see our button type, we've got outline and gradient. Love it. Okay. Um, this is something is conflicting, guys. We need to see what's up. Something is conflicting. Alright. So we have let's check. Check. We have this right outline over state. This is going to be gradient, sorry, undo, and then this is going to be gradient. What do you think is conflicting? Oh, this state here is supposed to be over state. Boom. We're good. Right? So, nothing else. This here is supposed to be default. Right? Just check, guys. Check, check, always check. So, come back here. It's cleaner. This is our over state. Right, this is your outline, right? Gradient, love it, guys. So, we're going to just bring it out here. So, the first one is going to be outline, change it to outline, and then we'll drag here, and then this one is going to be let's turn it to auto layout first, okay? And then move it around here a bit, and then this one is going to be gradient, and we're going to call this start for free that's for free right okay that's for free and you see that's what we got going on there but well, guys you can see that both of them are on bold both of them are on bold so you can't really be bold we can take it to semi bold just highlight all of them take it around semi bold right and guys we are in business Right, so I pay attention to every single detail. If I look at it now, I can see their their letter spacing is a little bit tightened up. 
So I'm thinking minus 0 0.5 pixel, right? Minus 0 0.5 pixel. See that? Love it. Now it's more time to end up, right? So we're going to we're going to use a lot more of that moving forward. So we can make this guy here eight, right? Make this here eight or twelve, right? Or twelve. So again, I'm using eight point grid rules, right? Um, yeah, so yeah, align horizontally. Make sure everything is aligned. I'm going to turn this to auto layout, right? So I could make this twenty four. Then this year is on 12, right? So this year, this is too far from each other. Bring it around 16 ish. 16, right? And then, ladies and gentlemen, our hero section is heroing, right? And we press on. Okay, I'm going to say let's go with this first, but we're not going to do that first. We're going to do the internet in your canvas, all right? So I'm just type the text out. So type it first and then I'll increase the size of what I typed so you can see clearly the internet is your canvas. Right? And now of course you are seeing it now, it does not look like anything they did, like yo, what for being? And this is where you must pay attention to your line height and your letter spacing, right? So here you could do your line height could be around 100 percent 100 percent is not even working so we're going to say around 128 it's the same size to the um font and then we're going to try to reduce it a little bit more right so the letter spacing we need to tighten it up more right you see we're getting there now, now we already have this we can just press our k the letter k on our keyboard and then we can scale. You know, K is so special. Scale, the scale feature is so special that when you start to increase, it increases alongside with the line height and everything. You see that it's not changing. Everything is just scaling in proportion, right? So you guys get used to that. All right, so we're going to scale it to around, say, here. Don't allow this fool you because this is 1920, 80 resolution. So, I mean, if I kind of like reduce it, so sorry, not scale, we reduce it to around here. You have to see that, I mean, we are kind of like on track. All right. So, we're going to do this like so. Okay. So, we're going to say minus six, right? Then here, like around 124, the line height. You see, it looks more like it, guys. The internet is your canvas. Now our eye here, yeah. all error. Okay, so semi bold. If semi bold does not cut it, you take it to bold. Actually, bold is. I think semi bold. Okay, but let's just leave us at bold. Mm, it looks more like it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Actually, no. Semi bold. <laughs> semi bold. All right, so let's go to the bottom. So normally I would just do kill this guys and just kill it down. I know get time and just type your primer is settings sign and publish turning turning sites. You are typing fast. I mean evidence of cyber traffic. What's there for years, guys? <laughs> we're going to make this around 24. Your line height should come back to zero, right? Take your boom board, put it around regular, right? So this could actually be like around 32, 32-ish. Uh, yeah, around 32. Or 24, 24 really works fine, you guys. It doesn't have to be bigger than that, right? Okay. Now we are done with that. Can we press? Can we press? Now the reason we're not going to be making this a component is because this is like I think one place uh, on the website that this guy is appearing. 
right? But we can only store it to a component when the need arises, but we're going to make it directly on the board, right? So let's go ahead with that. So there's a stroke, there's a text, and then there's another, there are like two frames there, right? Start for free, start for free today. So can we type that out, start for free today, right? So we're going to center it, we're going to turn it into an auto layout, right? And that auto layout, we're going to give it a feel of white. In our text, we turn our text to black. Today, let's correct ourselves, right? So we're going to give this, say, like a border radius of around, say, eight, like so, right? We're going to auto layout the auto layout, <laughs> right? And we're going to give that a stroke of right, make that white. So, okay, guys, I auto layout it. I use shortcuts, I use shift A. So, I'm just going to undo it. Then I auto layout the auto layout, right? So, it is possible. So, you will not really see that here. Like, your best shot is just pressing shift A, okay? Because here will give you options to remove auto layout and here. So, just press shift A, guys, all right? Um, yeah, stroke, make it white, give it a hit. Um, yeah, like so. Now we can drop this to around like, around like six or so. Yeah, around six or so. This guy here, we're going to make this around semi bold, medium, really. Then we're going to tighten it up minus 0 0.5 percent, 5 pixels on up percentage, all right? Different. So we're going to center it, we're going to zoom out, we're going to compare and contrast. Are we getting there? Yes, we are getting there. But I noticed that there's a lot more padding horizontally, right? So you could do it. So not at the, not in the auto layout, auto layout, in the inside auto layout. <laughs> yeah, we're going to make that around, say, 12, right? Or 16, really. Now remember, the outside auto layout is hugging, so as this guy expands, it's forced to conform to the expansion, right? So we're going to center this, right? Okay, what else are we looking at? Uh, uh, yeah, I think we are good. So we're just going to do our gradient for this guy here. I'm going to look at the padding up and down. I think it has to be around 12. Looks more appealing, right? Looks more appealing. I'm using 8-point grid, if you notice, right? I mean, I only used it here because I feel like it's actually way more appealing to the eyes, right? So I think the outer layer should be bigger. The bigger it goes, the bigger your element goes, the more the, uh, what's the word, the more the radius, okay? The more the radius, actually, right? So the more bigger your element gets, it lost the sensitivity of its radius. So I'm going to make this inside guy here 8, and I'm going to make the outer radius around 12, right? Okay, now let's go ahead and say make a shadow, sorry, gradient, I mean rotate it, right? Now the down guy here is around like say blue or so, or Still like dreaming to like around high opacity. It's not blue blue, high um, um so no opacity, high brightness, right? And less saturation. Okay, high brightness and less saturation using HSB, right? So we are somewhat around there. Okay? See guys. So you can bring it back a little bit for it to be more pronounced so they can show more now you see that guys okay now you see that um so so our spacing horizontally actually needs to go further so we could do 24 right so make sure everything is centered here to make sure everything is centered centered right here we could for semi bold right i think we are on the lock love it but that's not where it stops actually now you get to realize that there is say, like a shadow and then there's like 
there's a white field with low opacity. Guys, pay attention to details, but we can't do that now because we don't have our gradient. Okay, so we'll visit that again. Pay attention, we'll visit that again. So let's tackle this guy here, but let's tackle the gradient first. Then we'll come back to this guy because I know why. You can see like there's something going on here, there's something really interesting happening there, right? All right, then let's go for our gradient. Are you ready? Now we're going from black to blue, right? We're going to be using rectangle. The reason we're using rectangle is because if you place the gradient on this frame, when you increase it, it will lose composure, right? So we're going to be using a rectangle, right? Up. These are appropriate ways to use rectangle, guys. Don't, don't slap it on your EV field. Right, so we're going to do this. Right, we're going to select this color like so. We're going to send it to the back. It's already looking fire. I mean, I love this. Hmm, Framer, I got you guys. So, um, here, you do your gradient. Now, I want the darker one up. So, I'll just swap it, flip it up. This guy here, I'll make it back. We are already on that path. Guys, are on the path. All right. Okay. What else? So you see that there's like kind of like a, a green splash here. I love these guys. They they cook, cook at thing. Right. So I'm just going to get an eclipse, like draw something like so, and I'm going to say turn it around here. Right, turn it around here, like so, right, like so. Make sure it's inside the frame, guys. Make sure it's inside the frame. Then I'm going to select this color here, right? I'm going to open my palette and then move it to around green ish, around here, around here, ish, right? And then I'm going to click on my blur, I'm going to click layer blur I'm going to take it to around 200 percent and just see how it feels like i'm going to send it to the back i'm going to send this to the back not just step ahead now i hold my control shift to send it to the back and i hold my control so control shift bracket right send it to the back to the back like back back then you want to stay, send one step up hold your control and then press your bracket yeah, your right bracket. Okay. Now we got this right. So here we can just fill the opacity, guys. Make it blend, right? You know as much I feel like this is this does not do justice to exactly what I'm looking at. So probably going to need to blend this a lot more, right? So yeah. So you see, I think there's something still coming. From this end, right? So we're going to check their website. Where's the website? Aha! Now you can see there's something coming from this end, guys. So you see, there's a lot more lighter color here. I love this. Like I really love how this is going. All right. So let's try something. Like so I'm going to bring this. So we're going to increase. Our desktop frame and increase it now you see how everything is moving so you just make sure you highlight click on the frame hit your enter select everything on your frame right um, click your enter it's going to select everything on your frame and then click on the constraint um, say top everything should be constrained to the top so that way if you increase, um, increase the height Everything is just going to be there, right? So, guys, we're going to be sending another. Um, so, I'm going to explain. So, this guy, this guy here, if you see this guy, would frame it. <laughs> would frame it, right? And we're going to draw that. We're going to say here, everything is constraints constraint to the left. Because we want to move this right around here, and then everything should constrain to the top. 
because we want to move the frame right around here. Now, this is not the desktop frame. This is a frame I just added, right? The reason I did this so we can clean the content so it should not overflow. So that way, I can increase the height, right, of that frame. But then again, we have to move, guys. We have to move. So I'll increase that here. I will move this to right around where I drag the frame to. Probably needs to be a lot more longer because we're going to have something else happening here. So let's just make sure it's there. Actually, way more longer than that. Let's increase it, guys. Somewhere around here. Um, yeah, this tutorial is going to be long. All right, see, right now we have these guys. We have this. Um, so I'm going to send this right around here. I'm going to send this to say to Prism, go to website. You see, there's like a red splash coming on, like a yellow splash coming on there. Increase the opacity a little bit. Let's see what we got here. Right, so we increase the opacity a little bit, make it a bit broader, which is a, a bit so we have something like so happening here. It's just so much. Like, I feel like this thing is actually like as big as this, okay? Then, as big as this, then the opacity is around like 500. Sorry, the layer blow is around 500 and then down here and then this guy just somehow comes inside a lot more so you can have that light lead around the effect you know you know you see we really could do sorry we really could do the same thing for this guy here right increase this blur like say around 500 then increase the opacity of this. Increase the opacity of this. This like splashed around green ish. So like take this in a little bit, a little bit, and like suck it in. Right? 500 might be like too much. We could do 450. 450. Okay. Right around. Just take it back a little bit. So we have this flash around something like this right i mean it's not perfect perfect but it works guys okay i need to render i need to refresh it's not rendering properly we need to refresh we need to refresh guys we need to refresh <clears throat> all right fresh love it you see now please can we proceed now there's like a shadow here i see like an eclipse there right i see like an eclipse here let's invert it stroke it's not inside the frame let's paste it inside the frame now let's increase that stroke to around say 30 something like this make it what make it around black and then increase the blur effect the layer blur and make it around like say 200 so 100 is too much, make it 100. Now that way, see there's like this shadow going on here, right? Uh, you got to see, guys. You need to see. One of your superpower designers' your ability to see. I want you really seeing, guys. Right? So you can see like there's a lot more, sorry, there's a lot more like saturation top level, right? So we probably need to move the blue. Up a little bit. So going to the way main website, you can see that like you see this is what's going on here. So we probably really could play with um let's do something. Now just so you know, right? Just so you know, guys, you can add um say so let's click on our rectangle, you can add another fee, right? And then make it gradient and then still do your thing, right? You do your thing so we do not necessarily have to use like say all of this right we could actually play with extra few layer on your rectangle so let's remove this right let's try something 
No, so I'm just being spontaneous. I want you to know like everything. So this guy, we're going to drag it to this angle, right? And then I'm going to say, let me copy this color code. Go back to our rectangle inside, our frame. And then here, we're going to say paste the, um, what's the word? Okay, yeah, I don't think I have the color here. Yeah. Just select it from here. So, right. So we could from here, it's around 20%. So we just take it to 100%, right? So, right, you see what we got going on. So you can just drop this, right? We drop this, say, around. So we could send this really to the top, right? And then create another frame to drive it down a little bit. See? Like so. All right, we could do that, right? So you see, this guy here, we actually almost do not need that. We could do the same thing, but it's gonna be tricky. It's gonna be tricky. Oh, oh, it's gonna be tricky. A lot tricky. Right, but it's actually safer. It's safer like this, right? It's safer. So we could do this here, right? Let's say this guy, we need a lot more saturation at the top level. I just created another node point and then bring it up a little bit. Right. Now, so guys, back to this. This guy here, we're going to auto layout this guy together. Now, after auto layouting this guy, remember this tree is auto layout. This tree here is auto layout. We're going to auto layout the entire thing. Remember, the spacing we're using is 1, 1, 2, both end. So I'm going to set my margin to 1, 1, 2, both end. And I'm going to center this guy and I'm going to explain why. So top and bottom, we're going to make it around 24, probably to be keep it around 16, right? And then um, say align to the top, right? Then the top area we could break this and make that top area say around 24. Because we need more padding at the top. Okay. So now we make that fade to black, right? Now you see. That there's a break here you can it's obvious that there's something there we don't want it to be obvious so what we'll do is we'll adjust the gradient guys we'll adjust the gradient to come down around like so you see it actually blends in properly now so you see this guy here that is flat chain to that end we don't need it actually to that extent so we'll probably want to reduce the blur to around like 300 right 300 you see um so i think it's perfect perfect guys perfect now you see the reason we did that is so we can make this fixed right we can make this fixed and it can scroll appropriately it can scroll guys and it will be fixed and it will just come out really nicely I think we need space at the bottom. What do you think, guys? So let's look at Prima website. Oof, I think it's perfect. I think it's perfect, right? So remember, these guys did it real good. So you see, this guy here is impacting. It's getting to the outline. We need to check what's going on there. Here, is this guy getting here. Oh, it's getting to that point. So here, here, let's see, everything is perfect, right? Same as this, same as all of these, right? Um, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, I mean, we've been able to do that, guys. So, if you notice Freema website, there's like a noise, right, at the background. You can see, pay attention, there's a noise there. You want to put that noise right want to put that noise i'm not still feeling the stock entirely i think there's like a sharp blue coming from the left hand side so we'll probably want to hide another the top field we're going to introduce this blue in a bit we want to add another top field make it 100 percent right make it gradient right so we're going to send this gradient from here like so right and then this guy here so right 
So this guy here, the darker side, we're going to pick from this blue here, right? And we're just going to say send this guy um send this guy down. So we'll make this a here. Copy this, we'll paste it here. We need it there too. Like blue, blue. Send this guy around here. Like so. I don't like the line it's giving there. So all we have to do is probably introduce blue. So you see. Probably need to make that guy a lot. But so. Drag this outside a bit. Drag this guy. I think we're just going to have to move okay, entirely and then move this guy around here a bit. Now let's turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. So you can bring this guy here to the top. You can drag your, bring this guy here to the top and then leave this guy. In the background, turn it on. See, so there's a blue, the sharp blue coming from that end. Um, I don't think it's quite, it's it's exactly what we want. Probably we need to um take hmm. Blue coming from that end. Um, I think it's kind of like working, working, but I don't like the the that. Uh, I like it. So let me move this back a little bit, little bit, and then increase hmm, the not bad. Not bad entirely, not bad, right? That's why in this this particular part, I think we're going to have to resort to using gradients, right? So remember here we're using one. Just going to pick that same one, increase the length a, real, a little bit, take our color picker, pick this from here like so, and then boom, we have blue. We have blue guys. We have blue. Love it. So you see, I love Prima. I say love Prima. I love Figma. So here, right. So we have a lot going on here, guys. I love it. Okay. So now, so um, this particular part, we're going to need you. So um, we're good. We're good. Now let's create this guy here and then we can call it a day, right? You can call it a day. Now let's go inside while we cook this thing up. Now we need a frame here. Let's cook it outside, guys. So I need a, I need a frame here and then another frame here and then not only out and then a vector element that is going to act as the shiny gradient thing that is moving around all right so what does this say replay our spring event right so now guys we can actually make use of this because i think this is some somewhat gradient right so we can actually make use of this here right and call it the new right and remember the gradient the radius is 100 percent right so we could just turn this to um, auto layout, increase it like a bit so, right, and then give it this color and increase this so, and then type out, replay our words, our sport event, our spring event, replay our spring event. Now I, I continue typing so I show you how to adjust this. So when you turn, um, when you turn two elements auto layout, right, so. Auto layout assume the, the position vertically or horizontally. 
Now he has zoomed vertically. You just go here and change it to horizontal, right? Now this guy is here. You can just use your arrow key, move it to the left, right, or you drag it. Right here, want it centered, right? And then we want it hog, okay? And we need a little bit of spacing across, so we could do 12, really, or we could do 16. 16 looks like a little bit too much here, so we could make this 8 and 12. I mean, it works. Let's do 16 left and right. And top and bottom, we could do 12. So I think, nah. Nah. Nah, nah, no way. This guy here is too much. I'm gonna make it four, right? I'm gonna make that four. This year we could make it say eight. Uh, uh, so maybe twelve left and right will be around twelve. Also, okay, placing between these two texts can be eight. Can be eight guys. I think yeah, we're actually good. Locked in, right? So you can see that there's a little bit of stroke. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there's a stroke there and there's a shadow, right? So let's do that. There's a stroke. That stroke, we're gonna leave that stroke white. Um, then reduce the opacity. The stroke is giving gradient if you pay attention to it, right? Actually, the ingredient, and I also think it's because of the movement of that element here. But we can look, leave this around like say, no gradient, make it 1.5, right? The reason it needs to be low opacity is because we want it to somehow give us that glass feeling on the gradient here, all right? So, um, yeah, that's that. Mm, what else? Now, the moment of truth. So this actually cannot be auto layout because we're going to have to put an element there. So we'll go to polygon, right? Right. That polygon, we don't even need to, it does not have to be polygon, it could be eclipse. Make it around something like this, okay? Now, remember guys, you could make it gradient top to bottom. So you just look at it. You could do top to bottom, say here. This other guy, you could make it say light, right? And then flip, not flip, rotate, sorry, horizontally, right? Rotate something like so. After you've done this, you have your effects, you make increase the layer blur, right? You increase it, you increase it, and you make it somewhere around here, guys. And this is not really giving me what I want it to give. So I'm going to copy the property of this. I'm going to go to polygon, I'm going to draw a polygon, I'm going to make it four sides. I'm going to increase the opacity, but the width. I'm going to increase the width. I'm going to reduce the size a little bit. It's giving, giving that. But I'm going to double click on it to edit the north point. And I'm going to make this like so. Remove that north point. Not remove it. I'm going to turn it to curve. It's on straight. And I'm going to hold my control key. Or you just click on the bend tool and click it to make curve. Click on this one also. I'm going to make it curve. Click on it. Um, here, curve. How I was able to assess my north point is when you click on vector element, you click on a bit object, guys. As simple as that. So I already copied the property of this, it means I'm going to copy the gradients. For it. I can just paste it here gradients and the blur, and then I paste it here. Okay. So I'm going to look at this from their website and I'm going to see how it looks like. So you see that? I think this thing actually needs to be horizontal something like this right something like this i believe this guy here should be a sharper gradient and then this guy here could be a lighter gradient -ish. yeah just increase a little bit right 
So we are going to move this inside here. We move it, it just looks for a way to break. Just it's going to look for a way to break. So I'm going to turn this into we're going to remove the auto layout here, right? And or you could as well just frame both of them, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to remove the auto layout, right? I'll remove the auto layout. So this guy here can fit into it, right? I will cut it and I will paste it inside. And you see, it's showing. The reason it's showing is because it's not clip. If it's not clip, it's going to just, you know, cut it out. It's not. It's not clipped. So pay attention to that also. I'm going to reduce the size. So the more you reduce the size, you need to also reduce the intensity of the blur to give it to still maintain that effect, guys. So here, somewhere around here, right? So um I think we good really we good this guy here let's not the opacity everything here should be blah reduce the blur effect a little bit more so now we have this guy moving around right so we're going to prototype it I'm just going to create <coughs> I'm going to create this, turn this into a component, right? And I'm going to create component, right? And then this guy is here, and then I'm going to move this guy to the other side, right? So it's just going to be moving left, right, left, right, left, right. I mean, that's the best you can do with Stigma, with Stigma really. An attempt to want it to make it rotate, it's just it's pointless, really. Considering you can't even. I don't want to say you can export you can export it to GIF. But what's the point? It really does not make sense. Really. Um so prototype drag to this use after delay. After delay means that start on your own. After it's after a period of say seconds, you just start. So we're going to use one millisecond, meaning we want it to start immediately, right? And then we're going to use smart animate because we want it to read that it is moving on the variant, right? And then we're going to make this around 700 milliseconds, right? Just move on out and in here. We do the same thing here, make it after delay one millisecond, 700 milliseconds for the transition um, timing. And then we want to also use smart animate. Really, we've done it, guys. We are good. But there's something else I want us to adjust. So bring this here like so we can see what we are talking about. All right, so the opacity of the stroke, select both of them, needs to go a lot more down. See? All right? We don't turn it into a gradient to give it more good feel, right? More good feel. Turn into a gradient, this works. And then the fill here, we need to reduce it to maybe 50%. So it shows like the gradient behind it. All right. So after that, we should have like a shadow. Both of them add a shadow. Increase the maybe 50% like so. Increase the blur effect a little bit. Right. Increase the blur effect. And make sure it's not clipped so you don't shut. Don't shoot yourself in the leg, right? Now we have if I click on my art to restart, we have this like so guys, we have this like so I love it. Okay, so we're going to bring this down a lot more. I right, will probably need to reduce the opacity of the field also a lot more to say maybe 40%. Now we see boom, hit this to the middle. Right, horizontally, hit this to the middle, right, and guys, we are locked in here. I'm going to make this stay around 56. <sighs> then to this guy here, closer, I'm going to make this. I think this guy should actually be closer. 48 or 40. Not too far. 40 is good for business. Here too, 40 is good for business. So you see? Guys, we have this 
my word, I'm exhausted. Um, yeah, we're going to so we have our frame here. Probably going to increase our frame a lot more, right? So let me explain this to you guys. So the background here, BG, right? You probably would have just instead of using a rectangle, turn the frame here to the gradient, right? It could have worked. Right. We also can still do that. I'll just copy the property of the frame of the rectangle and then paste it here. But really, no need since this guy is hosting a lot of other sub components, other sub elements. So let's just know that we are well arranged. I, I detest rectangles when not properly used, right? When not properly used. I hate seeing it on buttons, on input field. I hate it. I hate it, right? Unless you're trying to clip some stores, and you know that's when you should be using rectangle. You're trying to create a custom button or you know, editing the node points, that's when you should be using rectangle. If you want to illustrate, that's when you should be using rectangle. All right, so we have this going on, guys. So I love this, right? I love this. Probably we want to turn this to a component and then make it they have the over state to show it's clickable, right? Good to have. Right, but ladies and gentlemen, I think we are done here. Like, yeah, and for the noise, right? We could click on the rectangle where we are having our gradients, to then search for a plugin, go to your blogging area, type out the noise, right? Type out the noise, um, type out the noise like so, and um, it's loading when it comes up. You know what's up. So it shows you something like this. You can control the color and everything and the amount of noise you want to see. I'm just going to click on hard layer. It's going to add here. Yeah, you see that we already added the noise for us. So I'm going to look at framework. How much of noise is there? I think this is the right amount. So after adding the noise, you just reduce your opacity to like 20, 10. You should just blend in. I think we need more amount of noise. <gasps> yeah, a lot of amount. Okay. It's five percent. So it just blends. Maybe make it a lot more visible. And how far? Is it showing? Do we have the noise? Yeah. I feel the noise. I feel the noise I'm going to make it a lot more visible. You could try it. Are you feeling it? Are you feeling it? Mm, it's there. It's there. 10%. Right. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is. um. So yeah, guys, we good. Let's call this a wrap. Thank you so much for being here. Give me a subscribe, give me a follow, give me a retweet, share the contents to your friends. Thank you very much for this, for staying till the end of the video. I'm probably gonna turn this into a series, so look out for the next section, to the next section, right? So um, yeah, so we probably need to like create a frame here right uh make that frame say around like white right white give it the border radius a little bit drag it down a little bit they make it around like 50 percent like so and then you know have other stuff going inside of it and if you see what we had like if you see their website you know that they have something going on here Probably we're not going to do that, but just to show you um, something that uh, we'll work on the next section, right? Moving forward, right? Guys, we're going to work on the next section, next video. Thank you very much, right? Do have a great day. Ah.